Now let's turn to Jason, because you've had a long interest in biomarkers for the efficacy of immunotherapy. So the question is, do we truly have robust, useful, clinically important biomarkers for the efficacy of any immunotherapy? Obviously, BRAF mutation would be a predictive biomarker. I would think we would all agree we would not treat a patient who's BRAF wild type with BRAF mechanovision, but with immunotherapy, it's a different different scenario, but do we have such biomarkers? The answer is sort of, I think. Uh, we do have uh, biomarkers that can inform the decision, um, and I think that there's going to be uh, sort of a, a good discussion around whether or not, uh, what their clinical utility is. I'll tell you that in my practice, um, the one immune biomarker that's readily available is PDL1 immunohistochemistry, and yet I almost essentially never order it. Uh, and the reason for that is that when I look at the data of our clinically available therapeutics of CTLA-4 antibodies and PD-1 antibodies, um, you know, we have multiple ways to do it. You can do one first, then the other, or do them both at the same time, or vice versa, right? So the question is, does doing PDO and histochemistry strongly inform that decision-making process? And in my practice, I, I find that I, I think it does not. Um, so there's a high degree of response to PD-1 monotherapy. It's higher with the combination, but it's very clear from your trial, Checkmate 64, that there's substantial benefit to sequencing the drugs. And it's not entirely clear to me that there is actually any less benefit doing that than there is of giving the two drugs together. Um, it's an open question, but the data sets that we have so far at least allow that argument to be entertained. So in that context, then, when I think about which, one, which approach I'm going to take, I really look at the patient and I say to myself, what is this, what's optimal for this patient? If I think that they're not going to have the chance to get both drugs, I'm going to give them both drugs together no matter what the PDL1 status is. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to start with a PD1 antibody and follow it with ipilimumab. And again, not necessarily informed by the PDL1 immunohistochemistry. So at the current time for melanoma, I do not use it. Um, I do think it's important to th think about a future landscape where we might have more drugs, and perhaps then we are going to need more um, useful biomarkers to inform that landscape, although we're not quite there yet. But I, I have a sense that other people may use PDL1 testing slightly differently. Okay. So Mike, does PDL1 standing of the tumor drive your decision? as to how and when to treat in any way? Yeah, so, and I have to say, and again, and this is something, again, that we talk amongst ourselves, I think, at all meetings about whether or not, you know, institutions offer this, are we using it? Um, I have to say that um, for all the reasons that pd one stain shouldn't be helpful, I think it's really interesting that consistently across trials, we do see higher response rates with single-agent PD-1 in patients that are positive. Um, and in looking at the, the recently reported data from Checkmate 067 at AACR, um, despite sort of this idea that, again, sequentially they, they should work as, as well potentially as, as concurrently, when you look at the overall survival data for patients that were PD-L1 positive, uh, where again the curves were completely overlapping in the PDL1 negative population, even though there was the availability of, of sequential therapy, there was an 11% difference in overall survival at two years in the PDL1 negative population. Um, I personally am ordering PDL1 testing on my patients. I'm not using it as the only criteria that I use to pick which therapy. Um, but I do have to say, in, in terms of that being a complicated decision, I actually am sort of incorporating that into how do I think about using single therapy versus combination therapy. Georgina, do you order it routinely? I don't order it routinely, but I do consider it and ring my pathologist when I've got borderline cases. So very much like Jason, if I have a patient who has high kinetics of disease where you need quick control, and that's the advantage of the combination of the two checkpoint inhibitors together, um, it's a pretty straightforward decision because I need to get control quickly. I don't have time to sequence. Also, we don't know the answer to the sequencing. We really don't, and there are trials that are being conducted. So uh, uh, anti-PD-1 first, if you progress, add in anti-CTLA-4. However, the borderline cases, and I'll just give you one example, for example, is a patient who's in their early to mid-70s, no core mor morbidities, but lives sort of two and a half, three hours away from the centre, um, quite rapidly progressive disease, but just not sure whether we should go for the IPPD-1 because he has to be able to report toxicity, get treatment urgently, and I would like to manage the toxicity. I don't like peripheral hospitals not connected to me managing it. So in that case, I will ring my pathologist and say, hey, tell me what the pd one is, but more than that, tell me about the T cells, the CD8 T cells. And for instance, this is a real life case. This, um, my pathologist said, look, he's got lots, actually moderate amount to high amount of, of TILs, 
and he's got some PD-L1 there. So in that patient, I said, okay, let's go with the PD-1 alone. And sure enough, he had a very rapid response. He was one of those few that had a rapid response to the PD-1. But it's only in those borderline cases where I'm trying to find a reason to give the extra toxicity. Okay, and lastly, Robert, do you think that PD-L1 staining should be done in every melanoma patient? I don't think we have enough data for you to, to justify that and also justify the cost for it, especially since we know that even if you're PD-L1 negative, you can have a very good response to the anti-PD-1 therapy. So at, the, at this point in time, to answer the question directly, the answer is no. The other thing also I think that, again, I'm, I'm bringing this back to the surgical perspective in all of this, is that we talk about PD-L1 testing, but what is not necessarily talked about as much is that where do you get that from? Is that from the primary tumor? Is this from a metastasis? And if, it, or, and if it is from the metastases, when was this taken? We know this is an inducible factor. We know this can change over time. So I think that there's a lot of uncertainty still about where this is taken from and how this will then determine uh, today what we will do in terms of anti pd one therapy, either monotherapy or combination. Additionally, I think that we still have also the challenge that there are a number of antibodies being used for this. And uh, how do we then reconcile those differences? Also, I think that we have to look at the, the percentage of the cutoff that we use. So um, is it really feasible to say that something is 1% staining versus 5% staining? Is sort of how do we determine those differences? So I think that the way I look at the PDL1 testing from that perspective is that either there is staining or there's no staining. But I think that to grade this on a continuous scale is quite challenging. And also, where the staining is. Is it in the tumor? Is it in the immune cell? So I think there are a number of unanswered questions in melanoma still for us to order this routinely and then use this to determine the, um, the therapy for our patients. Yeah, I think one of the most telling uh, pieces of data that I've seen was shown yesterday. I forget which oral presentation it was, but it was perhaps by Kurt Schalper from Yale at a biomarker talk where he showed a picture from a recent publication by his colleague David Rim, where there was a large tumor immunohistochemically stained, and they had one portion in the top, one portion in the bottom, and they cut that out and did a little and did immunohistochemistry for PDL1. One was absolutely negative and one was absolutely three plus positive, suggesting even in the same tumor you might get disparate results. So that to me is a bit of a problem.